Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making news this morning, the nation reacts to a controversial Florida bill restricting certain LGBTQ topics from being taught in the classroom. If you are tired or were tired of the chilly mornings earlier this month, those are now gone. It is very mild as of this morning. The problem is the dry brush could use a good soaking. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, March 29th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yesterday got a little warm and yeah, we're having to look out for the high wind out there. And Mike says the high of fire danger risk continues, especially going into today. Uh, we're still talking uh, very dry conditions and a breeze and or a wind. Very windy yeah. and same thing tomorrow, but and even more of a problem tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We get rid of the humidity. A lot going on in the next uh, 24, 48 hours. Um, first of all, we've got lots of clouds out there. It is very warm as Mark was talking about. We're in the uh, mid and upper 60s around here well above normal by a good uh, almost 15 degrees 10 to 15 degrees we've got a lot of humidity that helps out but still I mean even right now we've got a decent breeze out there 10 15 mile per hour winds and we have had some wind gusts already this morning uh, right now it's a 20 miles per hour it was gusting about 23 out there at the airport same thing at Lost Maples and it is just going to be blustery all day long we do have a lot of oak so it looks like we're uh, getting into that season moderate amount of mold. Now this morning temperatures uh, may drop down another couple of degrees here or there. Wind out of the southeast 10 to 20 miles per hour 85 for a high temperature today. So yes, we are going to be on the warm side and wind out of the uh, southeast 15 25 miles per hour. Yes, it does pull in the humidity, but not enough to negate the fact that we do have the red flag warnings in effect 10 o'clock up until 8 o'clock for the pretty much western two thirds of our viewing area Again, tinder dry brush out there. Then on on top of that, we have a wind advisory. This goes into effect at one up until four o'clock tomorrow morning for the eastern two thirds of the area. Then on top of that, later on, this is pretty much late tonight, early tomorrow morning. There is a small chance for some strong to potentially severe storms. We have a front moving on through here. The majority of anything strong to severe is going to be further up to the north. Just some isolated ones, some high winds, as well as uh, some hail. And that's going to be early tomorrow morning. It's going to be pretty much a, a hit and get out of here type situation. And going into uh, the show, Mark had said about a good soaking rain is needed. That's not going to happen with this, unfortunately. Now on the plus side, Great looking weather for the start of Fiesta. More on the uh, rest of the week and the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. See you in a bit, but thank you very much, Mike. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a controversial bill restricting certain LGBTQ topics in the classroom. CNN's Reed Binion has a closer look at what's now prohibited and reaction from both supporters and opponents. Florida's so-called don't say gay measure, as critics have dubbed it, is now law. On Monday, Governor Ron DeSantis appeared defiant at the bill signing after months of controversy. I don't care what big corporations say. Here I stand. I'm not backing down. DeSantis referencing Disney's condemnation of the bill, which has also sparked student walkouts in some Florida schools. Although it does not specifically ban the use of the word gay, the bill does prohibit instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity in kindergarten through third grade. Supporters argue the measure gives parents greater oversight over what students learn and discuss at school and that LGBTQ-related topics should be left for families to discuss at home. Parents have a fundamental role in the education, health care, and well-being of their children. But opponents say the measure negatively impacts an already marginalized community. So far, at least one LGBTQ rights group, Equality Florida, has threatened legal action against the legislation. You're clearly singling out, clearly discriminating against in this situation, and we feel it. Meanwhile, Trevor Project, a nonprofit that works on suicide prevention among LGBTQ youth, released a statement saying, quote, LGBTQ youth in Florida deserve better. They deserve to see their history, their families and themselves reflected in the classroom. I'm Reed Binion reporting. New this morning, one man is recovering after an overnight shooting on the south side of town. Happened around 10 last night on West Gerald Avenue, not far from West South Cross Boulevard. That's where police say the man in his 30s was sitting in his home when someone outside started shooting at him, hitting him in the lower back. 
He was taken to the hospital and is doing OK at this time. Officers don't know if he was the suspect was in a vehicle or on foot. In your other morning headlines, a federal judge has asserted it's more than likely than not that former President Donald Trump committed crimes in his attempt to stop certification of the 2020 presidential election. The ruling ordered more the release of more than 100 emails from Trump advisor John Eastman to the House committee investigating the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. The decision by the judge marked a major legal win for the panel as it looks to correspondence from Eastman, the lawyer who was consulting with Trump as he attempted to overturn the presidential election. The Pentagon is planning to accelerate production of missiles as it continues to send weapons to Ukraine. These new weapons will go toward refilling the Defense Department's depleted stock. Officials say it is ramping up production of Stinger anti-air missiles and Javelin anti-tank missiles. According to a recent military assistance wish list, Ukraine has requested the U.S. deliver 1,000 of these weapons daily. The U.S. and other NATO members have already sent tens of thousands of missiles to help Ukraine fight off Russia's invasion. President Biden's $26 billion request for NASA's 2023 budget is the largest request for science in the space agency's history. That's according to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, who added that the amount is 8% more than the appropriation bill from fiscal year 2022. Nelson said it represents an investment in the businesses and universities that partner with NASA and the good paying jobs they are creating. NASA officials believe it will allow the agency to continue investing in the Artemis program. Artemis aims to land more people on the moon in 2025 and prepare NASA for the first human exploration of Mars. And time now is 436 and 67 degrees for now. Still ahead, how a program at UTSA is helping foster kids get the opportunity to go to college. And the Spurs are on a roll, getting a big win against Houston last night. We're going to have a recap next. Fantastic news. Let's check Transguide right now, see what's happening out there on the highways and byways of the Alamo City, I-10 and I-35. No problems there. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting at 67 degrees, a little warm today, and also some red flag warnings in effect later today. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Our San Antonio Spurs looking to sweep their four game road trip last night against the Rockets over in Houston. Spurs start strong. DeJounte Murray finds Keldon Johnson driving hard at the basket. He gets the tough shot to fall. San Antonio jumps out to a 10 3 lead, led the half at 67 55. It would end very close. Houston had a chance to force OT, but Kenyon Martin Jr.'s game tying three rims out at the buzzer. DeJounte Murray scored a career high. 33 points and that helped the Spurs hold on for a 123 120 win over the Rockets with the win the team inches closer to that final play in spot in the Western Conference. It was the fourth straight victory for the Spurs who have now moved within one half game of the Lakers for the 10th spot in the West. Keldon Johnson had 21 points. Jakob Pertl added 17 points with 13 rebounds as the Spurs dominated inside outscoring Houston 72 to 30 in the paint. Whatever we got to do to win, you know, uh, it wasn't easy. We knew it was, uh, it was tough. They were hitting shots. Um, you know, you can tell we're a little bit tired, but, you know, we dug down. Uh, uh, DJ made some big plays, you know, we all contributed and things like that. And uh, oof, we got to win, so that's all that matters. Great win. Up next, Spurs come home to host the Grizzlies. Tip off tomorrow night, 7.30, out at the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The NFL has sent a directive to all 32 teams in the league that they must hire a minority offensive coach for the 2022 season. That's according to ESPN. It's part of a series of policy enhancements to address the league's ongoing diversity efforts. The coach can be a female or a member of an ethnic or racial minority. The coach must work closely with the head coach and the offensive staff and will be used to help produce the most sought after candidates for upcoming head coaching positions. Hey, 100th anniversary of the Valero Texas Open tees off Thursday at JW Marriott's TPC course. Jordan Spieth returning to defend his title from last year. And look who we found getting ready to compete. 2016 PGA champ winner and local resident Jimmy Walker, who won the Open back in 2015 by holding off. Guess who? Yes, Jordan Spieth. Should be a great tournament. <laughs> And time now is 442 and 67 degrees for now. 
Still ahead, how a program at UTSA is helping foster kids who age out of the system. The next why a stalking case involving a teenage TikTok star has been dismissed by a Florida judge. And welcome back. It's 445. A Florida judge has dismissed a stalking case. A teenage TikTok star brought against a male student at her high school. ABC's Andrew Denver has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the TikTok star taking the stand. I would get incoming messages 10, 20 per hour per day. 15 year old TikTok star Ava Madri accusing a classmate of stalking her. The second stalking case she says she's faced tied to her social media accounts. Ava claiming a fellow student followed her around school and allegedly provided personal information about her to a separate male individual and helped him plan a crime to possibly kidnap or murder her. A Florida judge dismissing the civil filing, deciding there wasn't enough evidence. About a year ago today, I was a normal 15-year-old girl, living my life, playing soccer, going to high school, and spreading positivity all over my social media. Now I'm afraid to even leave my house. And we'll hear from Ava Madjury's attorney coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Foster children who age out of the system often lack support, making college seem out of reach. However, as Courtney Friedman reports, a program at UTSA is addressing that, making sure former foster students get the help they need. Jaslyn Montemayor is about to graduate UTSA early with a finance degree, an impressive feat for any student, let alone one with a challenging background. I think I would have been probably, honestly, not to be vulgar or anything, but like in a ditch somewhere. Like I did not have the best life growing up from the beginning and it just would not have ended that well. She landed in foster care at three and years later was finally adopted. I actually was one of the lucky ones. But she says so many foster children age out of the system with little to no support and don't even dream of going to college. That's what UTSA is changing with its Fostering Education Success Center, a one-stop shop for former foster youth. Associate Director Emily Marcott says first, they get connected with a campus coach. Making sure that they feel comfortable taking classes, that their financial needs are met, their housing needs are met, um, even connections to physical and mental health resources as well. The office also has this big pantry inside where the students in the program can come get things for free. They have typical pantry items like toiletries and food, but they also have baby products and pet products for both human and fur parents. In just three years, the program has served 150 students. Our trajectory for admissions right now is double that of last year. Last year we brought in an incoming group of over 100. They want to get their masters and they want to get their doctorates and I think that's it's a support system that you need to really understand that you can do this. Montemayor proof to other foster youth that their past does not have to define their future. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And taking a look outside with Transguide this morning, we saw flashing lights out there at I-35 at Walsham Road and here's a look at I-37 in Houston. Things are calm there. It feels, feels very spring-like out there this morning. Uh, Mike, it was mid-60s when I left the suburbs, around 70 here in the downtown area this morning on the way in. Yeah, very warm temperatures. Normals are 55, the average low temperature. So way above that, uh, normal high temperature is 77. So we're going to be way above that again. Beautiful uh Beautiful picture yesterday, the pinks and purples there, and some of that may be because of a little bit of the uh, kind of the smoke in the atmosphere from some of those wildfires out there. This morning we are starting off with plenty of clouds. We're going to keep a fair amount of clouds around throughout the day today. And again, temperatures are in the uh, in the 60s and dew point temperatures are up. So normally this is a I mean is a really good thing, but this is going to be sort of superseded by the wind because uh, usually with the red flag warnings, it's the dry air and the windy conditions, but we do, but with the ground so dry and all the tinder so dry, the higher humidity is it's helping, but not enough. Wind right now is still fairly breezy, uh, 10, 15 mile per hour winds out of the southeast, and we do have some gusts on top of that. We're keeping a lot of clouds around this morning. Temperatures will be right around mid 60s, and again, a lot of clouds all the way through the morning hours, uh, upper 60s, low 70s by 11 o'clock, 73 degrees. We start to see some sunshine mixed in, and we'll have more sunshine to the west.
more clouds to the east today. And again, that's where you don't want more sunshine because that's just going to heat things up even more out to the west and help out with that fire danger. We're going to top off today at 85 degrees. And again, the wind does start to pick up late morning and early afternoon, and that's what's prompting the red flag warning. Any fires can spread very, very easily. Do not do anything that's going to cause fires out outside today. And this goes till 8 o'clock tonight. Then also 1 o'clock wind advisory goes into effect up until 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. So it's going to be windy all night long. And that's going to sort of be preceding then and along with that front that moves on through here. So lots of clouds again today. Then tonight we start to see some of these showers developing out there to the west. And this is 3 o'clock in the morning. So it's not going to be till the overnight hours. And the majority of everything is going to be staying up there to the north. The front comes on through again about this time tomorrow morning. A couple of thunderstorms are possible. Again, the majority up to the north. This all gets on out of here. So by the end of the morning commute, it looks like most all of the rain is going to be out. Some of those storms, one or two of them may be strong to potentially severe. High winds are going to be biggest threat, some large hail. But again, the majority of that stays well up there to the north of us and then we clear on out. But then the problem with that then is the fact with drier air coming in behind this front still Still windy conditions. We're still going to have a high fire danger tomorrow. Weather Service has said they are more than likely going to be posting uh, red flag warnings for tomorrow as well. 73 degrees today at noon. Windy conditions and then a high gets up to 85 and it is going to be breezy. A lot of clouds, more sunshine off to the west. We have the front moving through tonight. That's going to touch off a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, and one or two could be on the, the stronger side. It'll be this time tomorrow when things are pretty much getting on out of here. 85 for a high tomorrow and again, very windy, much drier air, which is not a good thing as far as the fire danger is concerned. For activities outside, such as the start of Fiesta, it's going to be fantastic on Thursday with really, really pleasant conditions, kind of warm, but uh, no humidity out there. And then we'll start to see some humidity come back in by the weekend and uh, a few more clouds around here. But again, the short term fire danger today and tomorrow. Just don't do anything outside. Basically. Something to definitely keep yeah. in mind. Have you noticed on the big picture, we've kind of started that slow march to more summer like temperatures yes, in the afternoons? Yes, we could definitely feel it. It's Especially Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. when it got really hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was up at Lake LBJ. It was a beautiful day. <laughs> Just gorgeous up there near Austin. 452, about 67 degrees. And coming up next, how the Academy is responding to the Will Smith incident. Plus, a look at the Oscars ratings this year. Here, you pick three numbers 390 Fireball 6. Your daily four numbers 5426 Fireball 3. Cash 5, 3, 4, 19, 24, 26, and your text is two step 7, 8, 23, 31, bonus ball 33. And your Powerball numbers 11, 18, 39, 58, 62, Powerball 3, Power Play 2. Good luck. 5 till 5, the Oscars get a jump in the ratings at a new series debuts on Hulu. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. <laughs> Oh, wow! We're hearing from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences about the Will Smith slap of Chris Rock Sunday night at the Oscars. In a new statement Monday afternoon, they say, The Academy condemns the actions of Mr. Smith at last night's show. We have officially started a formal review around the incident and will explore further action and consequences in accordance with our bylaws, standards of conduct, and California law. No word what those actions might be, but it's highly unlikely Will Smith will lose his Oscar. Meanwhile, the preliminary Oscars numbers are in. Good news? Up significantly from last year. A 56% jump, 15.36 million versus just over 10 million in 2021. But that's still the second smallest audience of all time and about half the viewers of 2019. We'll get more exact numbers later this week and possibly a breakdown of if viewership increased after the Will Smith incident. This kid has a history of depression. How's this girl responsible this time? A story that grabbed a lot of headlines now getting the limited series treatment. The girl from Plainville looks at the 2014 suicide of Conrad Roy and the text messages from his girlfriend, Michelle Carter, that prosecutor said convinced him to do it. Elle Fanning plays Carter, telling me one of the things the series explores is just how cruel people can be to each other over their devices. It's so easy to do that because you're not standing in front of someone and see how those words you're saying affect them, and you probably wouldn't say the same things if you were standing in front of them. The Girl from Plainville debuts today on Hulu. And actress Lucy Lawless with a birthday today, she's 54. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
457, 67 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, details on another round of talks aimed at stopping the war in Ukraine. Do you or someone you know suffer from cat allergies? We'll tell you why scientists say you may not have to suffer much longer. That's ahead in your morning tech bites. And a quick look at the roads with Transguide. There's a look there at I-10 at Loop 1604. We saw some flashing lights there earlier today. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, wildfires burning west of San Antonio are finally being contained. We'll have an update. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. Ukraine and Russia resume peace talks again today as Ukraine is claiming new victories across the country. And in Washington, President Biden is standing by what he said about Vladimir Putin from this weekend. The latest coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting your day at 67 degrees. And again, we have dry conditions, so fire danger. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, March 29th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a good Monday. I know the start of the week can be a little rough for some people, but um, I know we're going to be in checking in with Mike because there's going to be red flag warnings as well. Yeah, good news that some of those fires are being contained, but yeah, bad news is we still have a very high fire danger, not only today, but tomorrow. And... Uh, you know, given the fact we don't have any decent rain, widespread soaking rain in the forecast, it's going to remain high uh, for the foreseeable future. 68 degrees right now, way above normal by 10, 15 degrees on average. And we've got a lot of humidity out there. That helps out. Unfortunately, not enough. We have a decent breeze already this morning. Temperatures today are going to be getting up to 85 degrees. And that's with kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds here in town. More clouds east more sunshine west. So it'll be even hotter out to the west, which is not a good thing as far as the high fire danger is concerned. The aquifer dropped down a big chunk yesterday, nine tenths of a foot and the allergens looks like we're finally getting into oak season. Yeah, my sinuses feel it. Uh, mold is on the moderate side, little bits of hackberry and mulberry out there. All right, it, it's interesting that we already have a fairly decent breeze out there this early in the morning. 10, 15 mile per hour winds, and we've got some gusts, 23 Lost Maples, 20 Bulverde, as well as Rio Medina, and it's just going to stay windy all day long. So warm, windy this morning, and then, like I said, mostly cloudy skies, especially to the east, more sunshine west, windy mid 80s. Then we go into tomorrow. We'll have some showers and a couple of thunderstorms. There's a front moving through tonight and it's going to be late tonight. So about this time tomorrow morning is when those showers and a couple of storms are going to be working their way on through the area. Then plenty of sunshine, windy and much, much lower humidity. So that's just going to add to the high fire danger again tomorrow. Rest of the week, lots of sunshine and very warm temperatures will be staying in the 80s. Humidity, at least for the latter portion of the week, the very start of Fiesta is going to be very nice. We'll see some more humidity come back in here as we go into the weekend. Red flag warnings go into effect 10 o'clock this morning up until 8 o'clock tonight for the western two thirds of our viewing area. Extremely high fire danger and and then also wind advisory goes into effect early afternoon up until four o'clock tomorrow morning for the eastern half of our viewing area. And then on top of that, we do have a very small severe threat northern half of the viewing area. And this is pretty much late tonight, early, early tomorrow morning. One or two of those storms tonight could be strong to potentially severe with high winds and hail being the biggest threats. But most anything that's going to be strong or severe is going to be much, much further up to the north. More details on the start of yes in the upcoming week weekend, first weekend of April, if you can believe. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, thankfully, these flashing lights aren't anything to be too concerned about, but this is some road work that's taking place here off of I-10 West, right there along Loop 1604 on the city's northwest side. So you can see that vehicles are making their way through there without any trouble, but this is not the only construction spot that is happening this morning. There's actually been a few overnight road work happening out in our area, but uh, right now, for those early morning commuters, that need to know exactly if there's going to be any slowdowns. The good news, this map is showing a lot of green and a lot of pavement out there, meaning that we're not seeing a lot of folks out there on the roadways just yet, but the morning is still young. So if you are traveling into San Antonio, the good news is you are in luck. We are seeing the same situation here. I-10 eastbound burning to downtown 25 minutes at this hour. 27 if you are traveling in from 281 and Bulverde in those southbound lanes. Southbound lanes from 35 are also looking pretty good right now. New Braunfels 26 minutes to downtown. 
downtown SA. But again, road work seems to be the trending issue this morning. We'll take a look and see how that impacts that morning drive. That's coming up in the next few moments. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Firefighters out at a home in Windcrest for a second time in the overnight hours. It appears a fire that broke out earlier has flared up again. Katrina Weber is live in the 200 block of Driftwood with Driftwind with that story. And Katrina, do you know if anyone was hurt? Well, we're still working to find that out. As soon as we get a chance to talk to uh, the fire uh, chief here, we'll be able to tell you that. But for now, uh, we are being asked to stay on this side of the street. The fire, though, is across the street there in the 200 block of Driftwind. Now, uh, firefighters were here originally about 1245 this morning. They said at that time that the fire was in only one room of the house. Uh, you can see that that is no longer the case. It looks like the whole house now has been affected by fire and or smoke. A firefighters told us at that time that there were two men who lived here and they did not indicate that anybody was hurt. Uh, in, the, in the last uh, half hour or so, they were called back out here again. The fire had flared up and uh, they have just finished uh, pouring water on it. When we got here, they were actually using that ladder truck as well as some hoses on the ground on that house. But it looks like they've got this fire completely knocked down now. And again, quite a bit of damage here. We uh, hope to get a chance to talk to some of those uh, th these supervisors here with the fire department so that we can get an update on the situation now. But for now, it looks like a, a lot of damage to this house here. Reporting live in Windcrest, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. 506 crews continue to work to contain the wildfire in Medina County that's been burning for days. Firefighters have it contained to 95%. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with the latest out of Medina County. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, staff. And like Mark, Mark, Mike said earlier, that wind and dry weather continues to persist. And it was those winds that helped the flames grow. But that growth now diminished for the Doss Goat Fire. The wildfire in Medina County is now 95% contained this morning burning over a thousand acres. The update coming after the fire crew spent the last three days fighting those flames four days after it ignited. The fire in Medina County is nearly 100% contained. For the first time, we are able to get a look at the scar left behind by the wildfire. This video taken off County Road 271, not far from the point where that fire started. Ash, scorched trees and burnt leaves were all that remained. Fire crews on the ground worked to contain the fire, utilizing bulldozers to put in fire lines to cut the fire off from its fuel, which were dried brush and trees. Firefighters then go in and make sure there are no lingering hot spots where fire is hiding in the root systems or inside of trees. So when we've got to the point where we feel the section of line is secure and the fire is not going to escape because we've done that work, we call it contained. So power was almost fully restored Two homes in the affected area last night. This morning, people living in the high mountain ranch subdivision will be able to return home and see the damage for themselves. The High Mountain Ranch community has lost 30 of its 50 homes. Officials say their work isn't done. It's still a potentially dangerous situation because the winds are still strong in that area and ground and brush are very dry. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Another round of peace talks set for today as Ukraine claims they have retaken several towns and villages, forcing Russian troops to retreat. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. This morning, as the fighting persists, Ukraine and Russia sitting down face to face in high stakes peace talks. President Zelensky proposing a compromise. If Russia withdraws troops to territories it occupied before the invasion, Ukraine would pledge neutrality and not join NATO. The deal would have to be guaranteed by third countries, possibly including the U.S. This comes as Ukraine continues to claim new victories. Zelensky confirming the city of Irpin, a suburb of the capital Kyiv, is liberated. This verified drone video published by local media shows the terrible toll of the fighting there. And in eastern Ukraine, leaders say they've retaken control of several villages, threatening to cut off Russian supply routes. But in heavily bombed Mariupol, thousands remain trapped with no humanitarian corridors. The death toll also rising. Ukraine saying 143 children have been killed since fighting began. The country suffering an estimated $565 billion in losses because of the Russian invasion. In Washington, President Biden standing by what he said about Vladimir Putin this weekend in Poland. For God's sake, 
This man cannot remain power. The president saying he was simply expressing personal outrage, not announcing any policy change. I'm not walking anything back. The fact of the matter is I was expressing the more outrage and I make no apologies for it. The Pentagon announced the U.S. is sending six Navy aircrafts to Germany that specialize in electronic warfare jamming. The move is expected to bolster NATO capabilities in the region and act as a deterrent to Russia. M1, ABC News, Washington. 510, 67 degrees. And still ahead, why Apple is reportedly cutting back production of its new budget iPhone. And outside with live cam, so glad you're with us on this Tuesday morning. We have some clouds, but it's uh, nice and mild out there this morning. Mid to upper 60s, not a bad way to start our day. You're watching GMSA. Actor Will Smith now apologizing directly to Chris Rock after slapping him at this year's Oscars. Now we are learning about the potential consequences he could face. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has a story. <laughs> oh, wow! This morning, Will Smith is apologizing to Chris Rock for the first time since the actor slapped the comedian for making a joke about his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, saying, quote, I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I was out of line and I was wrong. Reflecting on his actions at the Oscars, saying, quote, jokes at my expense are part of the job, but a joke about Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear, and I reacted emotionally, ending the post by saying, I am a work in progress. Smith's statement is the first time the actor has addressed Rock directly. He offered an apology Sunday while accepting his Best Actor Oscar, but not to Rock. I want to apologize to the Academy. I want to apologize to my, all my fellow nominees. Smith's new apology comes hours after the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences condemned his actions, saying, quote, We have officially started a formal review and will explore further action and consequences in accordance with our bylaw standards of conduct and California law. And now there are new details about the moments after the slap. The New York Times reports there were serious discussions about removing Smith from the theater during the 45 minutes between the slap and the award for best actor, fueling speculation that Smith could be expelled from the Academy. Three people have been expelled from the Academy in recent years. Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, and director Roman Polanski. Rock has yet to comment on the incident, but a source tells TMZ he was unaware of Pinkett Smith's condition when he made the joke. The Hollywood Reporter says the Academy's Board of Governors has called a meeting tomorrow to discuss the Will Smith incident. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. It's now quarter past the hour, 67 degrees. And up next, why scientists say suffering from cat allergies may soon be a thing of the past. Nope. Nope. Come on, him? Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. Premium seating for the whole family without dropping major dime. In today's Tech Bites, Apple reportedly cutting production. A new analyst report says Apple will make 20% fewer iPhone SEs in the next three months, and the company will reportedly make 10 million fewer AirPods this year. The cuts are the result of less demand than expected. TikTok is testing a new feature to make it easier to find lost videos. The platform is simplifying how users can access their watch history. Now videos that vanish into the massive stream of content when you refresh your For You page can be quickly located and saved. And might cat allergies become a thing of the past? Scientists say they've used new gene editing technology to create hypoallergenic felines. A study found gene editing may be able to eliminate a protein that's the major source of suffering for those with cat allergies. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Just about 520.
Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, things look a little better here off of 1604 at I-10. The view from TransGuide shows those flashing lights have gone out, and it does look like traffic is moving through there without any trouble. But keep in mind, this is some overnight construction that's going to be continuous, at least for a few days, and not the only spot. So again, let's go ahead and take a look at that map and show you where that's pinpointed over here on the northwest side. Now, the work that's being done there is some barrier setting, and that, again, will take place weeknights from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Drivers, if you make your way through here, keep in mind that we'll be wrapping up on Thursday, March 31st. You can expect that full closure of the westbound loop 1604 exit ramp to Lock and Terra Parkway right over here. Not the only worry spot, not, not necessarily worry, but road spot, we should say, uh, that you need to be aware of. There's still some drilling work that's taking place out here off 35 near Walsam. This did start at 9 in the evening and should be wrapping up to the, around 5 this morning, so we're still seeing a few flashing lights out over there. But again, keep in mind, that will last all the way up until Friday, April 1st. Drivers, you can expect a single southbound main lane closure from Frat Road to Walsham Road. Let's get that bird's eye view of the map right now. We're not seeing congestion anywhere else, but again, still some construction spots to be on the lookout for. We'll show you what's happening there along Walsham. 35 at Walsham. We still have a few live flashing lights, but hopefully we'll be seeing that wrapping up pretty soon as the morning does roll on. Guys? Thank you, Stephen. Yes, thank you. Hopefully. <laughs> Mike, that's a cute dog there behind you. Yeah, that's a beautiful picture and framed by the, uh, the water and the blue skies out there. Yeah, beautiful, breezy afternoon, and this is kind of a, uh, you know, good news, bad news situation. Yes, beautiful weather and a nice spring breeze, but then breeze at, uh, on the downside. Obviously, that causes the higher fire danger. We've got a lot of clouds around this morning. You're going to keep a fair amount, especially eastern half of our area. And speaking of high fire danger, yes, we do have red flag warnings that go into effect again this morning, 10 o'clock up until 8 o'clock tonight for the western two-thirds of our viewing area. Winds are going to be gusting about 25, 30 miles per hour. And despite the fact that we have higher humidity, we have obviously tinder dry conditions out there. So anything is going to spread very, very quickly. Any fires that may pop up and the wind is going to continue overnight. So wind advisories then for the eastern two thirds of our area, eastern half of our area, all the way through four o'clock tomorrow morning. We do have a front moving through here later on tonight, and that's uh, we're going to still have some breezy conditions in behind that. More on that in a second. First of all, a lot of clouds this morning, mid 60s, and we've got a, a good breeze out there right now. Temperatures will then get up into the upper 60s and low 70s late morning. We'll see some sunshine thrown on in here and we'll have more sunshine off to the west today, more clouds off to the east and then we continue up in through the 70s and get up into the low to mid 80s by later on this afternoon. And again, it's those winds that are the big, big problem out there with that higher fire danger. And again, like I said, despite the fact that we've got the higher humidity out there with these southeasterly winds pulling in all of that moisture in the atmosphere, which at least does help out somewhat. So it stays humid throughout the rest of today. Then here comes the front. This moves through overnight and it's going to about the, this time tomorrow morning be working its way on through the area. Much, much drier air comes on in here and it is going to be windy. So once again, the weather service has indicated that it's going to be uh, issuing red flag warnings again for tomorrow. So we'll still have a very high fire danger around here tomorrow. Then also as the front moves on through, it will touch off a few showers. So that's going to help. It's not going to be a widespread soaking kind of a rain, but at least there's going to be some rain out there and this will be right around this time tomorrow morning. A couple of thunderstorms are possible as well and then by the yeah, just about mid uh, mid morning commute. All of that's going to be moving on out and we do clear out so we'll have plenty of sunshine when that front moves on through. It may touch off a strong to potentially severe storm. High winds are going to be the biggest uh, problem with this unfortunately and then also some large hail but the majority is going to be further up to the north. We're sort of on the the southern edge here and this does include northern Bear County and then up in toward the hill country. Again, they're going to be few and far between at best as far as any um, as far as any thunderstorms tomorrow morning and the ones that could potentially be severe. 73 degrees today at noon. Windy conditions and then we top off with a high of 85. A lot more sunshine off to the west, which is going to not help out with that fire danger out to the west. More clouds off to the east. And then tonight the front moves on through here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's going to touch off a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Any rain is going to be welcome. We could use a heck of a lot more, though. And most of the rain is going to be gone by probably here in town, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. It'll be pretty, pretty quickly moving on through here. 85 and behind it, much drier air, very windy conditions, high fire danger again tomorrow. Now on the plus side, start of Fiesta looks fantastic on Thursday and a good looking weekend, although slightly more humidity 
going on into the weekend. A notable drop in morning temperatures. Yes, yes it is going to be cool it's Thursday morning, Friday morning. Okay, we'll be prepared that for drier that. air. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 524, about 67 degrees. And coming up next, details on Taylor Swift's honorary doctorate and Harry Kong Jr. gives piano lessons. That's just ahead in your morning spotlight. Welcome back. When you know what happened at the Oscars Sunday night, how many people were actually watching? CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. <laughs> Whether it was the slap or the actual awards, more people watched the Oscars this year. Early Nielsen results indicate 15.3 million viewers tuned into ABC's telecast. That's a 56% increase from last year, which was the lowest rated Oscars show ever. This year was merely the second lowest. Call her Dr. Taylor Swift. New York University is giving the music superstar an honorary Doctor of Fine Arts degree. Swift is scheduled to receive the honor and give a commencement speech at NYU graduation in May. People say to me all the time, I wish I knew how to play the piano. Why not learn from a Grammy winner? Harry Connick Jr. has launched Piano Party, an online course for all ages and ability levels. It's the first project in Connick's new online community, The Neutral Ground, described as an immersive experience meant to bring people together. You can register now at harryconnickjr.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 528 and 67 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, a look at President Biden's new budget covering everything from health care to human exploration of the moon and Mars. Plus why airfare could be getting higher over the next couple of months. Making headlines this hour, President Biden lays out his new budget, why some lawmakers are skeptical of his plans. And taking a look outside with live cam, another warm morning today and more red flag warnings to watch out for. Good morning, Rise and Shine. It's Tuesday, May, uh, May, March 29th. <laughs> don't, don't, don't skip Fiesta. <laughs> I know, we've got other stuff to do in the meantime. Yeah. Yes, we do. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Although some of these temperatures feel like they'd be about mid-May right mm -hmm. now because we're uh, averaging anywhere from about uh, almost 10 degrees above normal for high temperatures, even low temperatures. We're about 10 to 15 degrees above what it should be. Lots of clouds out there this morning and we've got 68 degrees. The normal average is 55, so we're way above that. We do have some humidity out there, so dew points have come up to measure moisture in the atmosphere, which is good news. Um, it's not completely eradicating the fire danger, but that does help out. We've got a pretty good breeze already this morning coming in here out of the southeast at roughly 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, red flag warnings going to affect once again 10 o'clock up until 8 o'clock for the western two-thirds of our our viewing area winds are going to be gusting about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Anything can spread very, very quickly. Please, please, no outdoor burning. Just be ex extra, extra cautious with it. Then we also have wind advisories that are issued and go into effect at one o'clock up until four o'clock tomorrow morning. So it's going to stay pretty windy all night long in the eastern two thirds of the area. Then also late tonight, and this is actually late tonight, early tomorrow morning, we do have a small severe threat. We've got a front moving through late tonight and that's gonna touch off a couple of showers and thunderstorms, especially in the wee hours tomorrow morning. There is the chance of a couple of isolated ones could become strong or severe with high winds being the biggest problem as well as some hail, but m the majority of those are gonna be further up to the north. Our rain chances are gonna be kind of, uh, well, few and far between around here, but the severe threat does include the northern fringes of Bear County and of course up 281 and out into the uh, hill country. Wind about 10 15 miles per hour out of the southeast right now. We already have some gusts 24 at Lost Maples, 18 Bernie Stage, as well as Balverde. And throughout the rest of today, we'll keep a lot of clouds around eastern half of the area, more sunshine to the west. 85 for a high temperature, and again, it is going to stay blustery. That front comes through and it clears things out. It's just going to be rain early in the morning, brings in much, much drier air and still windy conditions. So the high fire danger is going to continue tomorrow. Look ahead to the rest of the week and the weekend coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's the latest? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, the morning is moving. Other spots are really just showing a whole lot of pavement out there. But right now, if you do have to head out the door, be on the lookout and be prepared for some slowdowns. We're still seeing a little bit of construction that 
that's taking place in our viewing area. There's I-10 at the Y. You can see, though, the good news, we're not releasing a whole lot of traffic out there. The morning's still very young, but let's go ahead and take you to the map because that map is showing some bridge work that is taking place here off those I-10 westbound and eastbound lanes as well. Now, this bridge work actually began overnight at 8 in the evening and will wrap this morning around 6, but keep in mind, this is going to be current until Thursday, so anyone that is making their way to or from Seguin can expect to see a little bit of a slowdown. What you can expect again, those east and westbound lanes at I-10 at FM 1518 will be closed. Traffic in the meantime will be diverted to the frontage roads, but you can see those westbound lanes are showing a slight buildup. Elsewhere, though, we're just seeing more green, and that's some good news, but if you are traveling in from Seguin, the good news is you're not in the red or yellow just yet, but keep in mind, a 31-minute drive time to downtown San Antonio, 22 traveling in Lavernia on those northbound lanes, and 28 coming in from Floridasville. So no delays just yet, but we're going to watch that stretch of traffic closely and give you those updates coming up a little later on. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. An update to late breaking news this morning. Bear County arson investigators are taking a look at a home in Windcrest that has gone up in flames not once but twice overnight. It's in the 200 block of Drift Wind, not far from I-35. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, are they looking at this as a suspicious fire? Well, not necessarily. Uh, sometimes arson investigators are here simply to find the cause of the fire, but we don't know for sure. We have not been able to talk to any of the supervisors here with the fire department, although we're very close to them. We are being kept back by uh, Windcrest police. In fact, they just put up this crime scene tape a few minutes ago to keep us on this side of the street and prevent us from talking to anyone there. But take a look at the house. You can see uh, the extensive damage that has happened here. Now, earlier, firefighters were called here about 1245 this morning. That at that time, they had a fire in just one room. They thought they had put the fire out, but then a few hours later, they were called back again. And you can see the amount of damage that has happened since that time. Uh, originally, firefighters told us that there were two men who lived here. Uh, they did not indicate that anyone was hurt. We have not uh, had a chance to talk to the supervisor yet to find out if that is still the case. But it does appear that they have the fire out. And again, a lot of damage to this home. Reporting live in Windcrest, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Each year, the president drafts a federal budget and sends it to Congress for revisions. And lawmakers are scheduled to begin discussing President Joe Biden's 2023 budget later today. CNN's Amy Kiley looks at what's in it and how Biden hopes to pay for it. Congressional hearings on next year's federal budget are taking off. A House committee is scheduled to look over President Joe Biden's plan today. The budget I'm releasing today sends a clear message to the American people that we've what we value. Here are some of the highlights. Biden wants more funding for NASA. It could put the first woman and person of color on the moon and prepare for human exploration of Mars someday. He also wants to increase funding to combat the opioid epidemic and... We still spend what we need to spend to continue to fight COVID. But those expenditures will be dramatically less than last year. His plan has money for crime prevention, law enforcement and defense spending. Republicans say funding for that last item isn't enough. Putin and Xi will sleep more soundly at night if the Biden administration gets its way on defense funding than if Republicans get ours. Biden also wants to improve the supply chain in domestic manufacturing and favor clean energy. To pay for all that, he wants to restore some corporate taxes Republicans chopped in 2017. He'd like to increase income tax for people who are worth more than $100 million. And he wants them to pay for unrealized capital gains. Those occur when things like stocks increase in value even before people sell them. Moderate Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says he's skeptical about that idea. No matter how wealthy they are, they should have to pay. Everyone should pay, but not penalized to the point to where it doesn't make sense. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, Democrats are working to alter their presidential nominating process. The Democratic National Committee has drafted a proposal that would prioritize primaries in diverse battleground states. States would have to apply to hold an early nominating contest. DNC would then pick up to five states to hold the first ones. Right now, the Iowa caucus goes first, followed by primaries in New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina. During a meeting today, members of several members of the rules, uh, rather the meeting was Monday, several members of the Rules and Bylaws Committee appeared to support the new measure. They are meeting again in April to discuss the proposal.
Plans are moving forward for statues honoring former Supreme Court Justices Sandra Day O'Connor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The House voted to approve a Senate bill calling for the statues to be placed in the Capitol or on the Capitol grounds. It passed by the Senate in a unanimous vote back in December and now heads to President Joe Biden's desk. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a beloved voice for many on the court until she died in 2020. Sandra Day O'Connor is still alive 17 years after she retired in 2005. She became the first woman to serve as a justice in 1981. A launch by Jeff Bezos' space company Blue Origin scheduled for today has been delayed until Thursday due to weather. This week's scheduled launch came to public attention when it was announced Saturday night by Saturday Night Live Pete Davidson would be on board. He canceled the trip after it was delayed a couple of weeks ago. A you know, company employee was selected to occupy his seat alongside a small group of paying customers. The launch will mark the fourth crewed mission by Blue Origin. And time now is 540 and 67 degrees for now. Up next on GMSA, why now may be the best time to book flights for your summer vacation. And taking a look outside with live cam, starting to feel a little bit like summer. We're starting at 67 degrees. It's going to be warm again today. We'll be right back. 543, brace yourself for larger crowds and higher airfares this spring travel season. CNN's Jen Sullivan looks at spring 2022 travel trends and why you may want to book summer flights now. The spring break travel season is on and experts say expect higher crowds and pricier airfares. Jet fuel is costing more and airlines do have that major expense to pass down to consumers. Last month, average airfare in the U.S. went up 5 percent compared to 2019 levels, according to an analysis by the Adobe Digital Economy Index, which analyzed online sales from six of the top 10 U.S. airlines. You need to be quicker and more aggressive to grab good fares when they come up because they're going to be fleeting. Travel expert Willis Orlando from Scott's Cheap Flights says the ongoing conflict in Ukraine is partly to blame for those soaring prices. Earlier this month, Delta Airlines indicated ticket fares could rise by as much as 10 percent to offset the sharp increase in jet fuel costs. Orlando says the conflict is also rerouting demand towards domestic and short haul international destinations. Folks who are thinking of going to Paris are now turning around and saying, no, I'm going to Cancun. So you're not going to be, be alone. You're going to be fighting for other folks for those fares. You're going to see bigger crowds, bigger waits for things. You're going to see higher prices for hotels and, and the like. The war also delaying what airlines hoped would be the return of travel to Europe this summer. Orlando says it's spooking many away from overseas travel. And with lower demand, it could create an opportunity. That should mean that we see some more fare sales, lower prices as airlines try to get those tickets sold. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 544, about 67 degrees. And coming up next, why Walmart has decided to stop selling cigarettes in some of its stores. Welcome back, 547 on your Tuesday morning. In your morning consumer headlines, Walmart plans to stop selling tobacco products at some of its stores in the U.S. A spokesperson for the world's largest retailer says it made the decision after looking into tobacco sales. Walmart did not say how many stores will stop stocking the products. According to the Wall Street Journal, the company so far is removing cigarettes from stores in various markets, including some locations in California, Florida, Arkansas, and New Mexico. The Journal reports the stores will replace cigarettes with other products like food or candy and more self-checkout registers. It's National Mom and Pop Business Owners Day, and according to the U.S. Small Business Administration, there are more than 27 million small businesses in the country. And these small mom and pop shops and restaurants are a critical part of the economy. So if a small business is open near you, show them your appreciation by shopping there. You can share your favorite small business on your social media pages today to help improve their following. If you have to hit the roads in between now and 6 o'clock, let's see how things are looking out there. Things are looking pretty nice and fine over here on the roadways, guys. Right now we are getting the morning started. See, not a lot of uh, activity there at 410 in Morrison. Actually, pretty quiet. 410 at Starcrest. You can just see maybe a few more vehicles are getting out on the roadways as we start to see more people wake up and get their day started with us. Now, let's go ahead and show you that bird's eye view of the map because it looks like we do have a stall off of 410. We'll check that out in just a moment. But some of that overnight road work has actually already wrapped, so that's some good news. But let's go ahead and look at what we can expect 
later this morning. Keep in mind, this is some utility work that will begin at 9 this morning. Drivers, so you can start expecting to see TxDOT crews out there around that time. Wrapping around 4 in the afternoon. It starts from Monday. It started on Monday, that is, on March 28th, and will wrap up on Friday. That's April 1st. Traffic can expect to see a single southbound lane closure there at State Highway 151. Drive down over here shows some road construction that will also begin at 9 this morning and wrap at 5 in the afternoon. You can expect that to last all the way up until April 4th, drivers. And again, expect a full closure of the southbound bypass ramp to West Military Drive. So we'll likely see some slowdowns in that area, but right now, no slowdowns just yet. The morning is getting moving. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, good news there. And is that Woodline Lake again? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Minister McClellan out there and uh, looking at the sunset last night. And also notice there's that uh, kind of ring around the sun. And that's some, some of that high level moisture. And those high wispy clouds are tiny, tiny ice crystals. And they form little prisms. And so it almost makes like a rainbow sort of around the, uh, the sun. But yeah, good looking picture. And we're going to keep a lot of clouds around today, especially San Antonio east, more sunshine off to the west. We've got clouds starting off right now and water vapor imagery. This shows the moisture in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere and there's a lot of it out there, so that's going to help out with the cloud cover as well. But despite that, and we still got red flag warnings that go into effect, still a very high fire danger today it goes into effect 10 o'clock this morning up until 8 o'clock this evening, gusting winds up to about 25, 30 miles per hour, even gusting higher than that. Anything can spread very, very rapidly rapidly because it is just pretty much tinder out there with the dry conditions on the ground. Wind advisories then overnight, 1 o'clock this afternoon, up until 4 o'clock this tomorrow morning, pardon me. And we're going to keep, like I said, a lot of clouds around, especially this morning, and then some sunshine later on. Temperatures will stay pretty steady, maybe fluctuating a couple of degrees this morning, right around mid-60s here in town. Then we make it up into the low 70s late morning. Some sunshine starts to uh, peak on through there, and we'll have more later on this afternoon. Again, especially off to the west, wind is going to be picking Picking up late this morning and throughout the afternoon, about 15, 20 miles per hour. Like I said, gusting on top of that and some sunshine, 85 for a high temperature later on today. Here, computer model. So a lot of clouds hanging around here again throughout the day. Some sunshine off to the west and then tonight is when the front moves on through here and it's not until maybe right around news time uh, at 10 o'clock tonight, but then in the overnight hours when we'll start to see some rain starting to move on in. This is going to be a very welcome sight. It's not going to be a, a, a drought buster, a big soaking rain, but at least there's going to be some rain out there which will help out. And that line of showers, even a couple of thunderstorms will be moving through in the wee hours tomorrow morning and then pretty much exiting the area by about roughly this time tomorrow morning, mid morning commuter as it's really starting to get going. Now the roads will still be damp tomorrow morning and then we're going to be clearing out much, much drier air comes on, comes in behind that and that's going to once again increase the fire danger tomorrow. But as that front moves through, there is a small chance, a couple of isolated uh, severe storms. High winds going to be the biggest threat, maybe some small hail associated with that. But as you can see, the heavier uh, or greater chance for any uh, sort of severe weather is going to be further up to the north. But this does pretty much uh, northern half of our viewing area and that uh, isolated risk does include the northern fringes of Bear County. Once that front moves through with the drier air, that's going to allow temperatures to really dip down. So it's going to be much cooler by Thursday morning as well as Friday morning. Then the humidity comes back in here over the weekend. So that's going to hold temperatures, low temperatures once again up on the warm side, up in the low 60s. Forecast today, we are going to be up to 73 at noon. Windy conditions all day long and then a high temperature up to 85. So we'll still be uh, about anywhere from 7, 10 degrees above normal, normal high temperature being 77 this time of year. Tomorrow, we have some rain in the early morning hours, and then we clear on out much drier air, windy conditions, so a high fire danger again tomorrow. Weather services indicate indicated it's going to issue red flag warnings again for tomorrow. And then cool mornings, Thursday, Friday. Great start to Fiesta, a little more humidity this weekend. Again, we blinked. It was the holidays. We were talking about Fiesta being down the road, and here we are. There it is. But it, it is early this year, though. That is true. Because remember a few years ago, it sort of, it was about a two-week 
because Easter is right in the middle, and right. so they put they, it ahead of Easter this mm -hmm. time around. So yes, and yeah. it's kind of early, but it's usually late April. Mm -hmm. But we're just ready for it to be back. I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A lot of folks looking forward to it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's great to have something to look forward to this year. 553, about 68 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, three, nine, zero, fireball six, daily four, five, four, two, six, fireball three. Cash five numbers three, four, 19, 24, 26, Texas two steps, seven, eight, 23, 31, with a bonus ball of 33 and Powerball 11, 18, 39, 58, 62. Powerball 3, Power Play 2. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are following the latest on the war in Ukraine and the new peace talks this morning as Ukrainian officials say they have taken some key territory outside of Kyiv back from Russian forces. That and so much more right here on GMA. Inflation is doing more than raising prices for your food. You may have noticed higher prices when it comes to pet food as well, but there are some organizations in San Antonio that can help with that. Our web team put together a list to help with food and veterinary care costs. It's all online at ksat.com. Glad you're with us on this Tuesday morning. Still coming up in our next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. Many are taking on house projects this time of year. We've got some ways you can renovate on a budget. And one of the latest on an overnight shooting on San Antonio South Side, a man shot while sitting in his house. We have details ahead and Stephen is here tracking traffic for you. Our morning commute is now off and running as we approach the top of the hour. You're watching GMSA. Mike is talking about a small chance of storms in our forecast. That's coming up. One man is in the hospital this morning after he was shot in the back while he was sitting in his own vehicle. The latest ahead. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. Ukraine and Russia resume peace talks again today as Ukraine is claiming new victories across the country. And in Washington, President Biden is standing by what he said about Vladimir Putin from this weekend. The latest coming up. And scary video shows the aftermath that deadly pileup in Pennsylvania. We'll have details. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting off warm again, and uh, there will also be high wind to look forward to. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, March 29th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. The weather's been kind of nice, but it's also causing problems for, you know, fire and fire crews out there as well. The fire danger has been extraordinarily high for days now, and that trend, unfortunately, continues. Yep, continues today and tomorrow as well, because it's it's probably actually going to be worse tomorrow because we've got much drier air coming in mm -hmm. here and still breezy conditions. More on that in a second. Uh, first of all, we are starting off with plenty of clouds this morning and very, very warm temperatures. <laughs> We're in the uh, mid and upper 60s all around the area, anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. And right now we have, for this time of the morning, fairly breezy, 10, 15 mile per hour winds. We've got some gusts to 21 Rio Medina, 24 out there, Lost Maples. Winds today are going to be gusting about uh, 25, 30 miles per hour. And that's what's prompting red flag warnings for the western two thirds of our viewing area. Does include all of the 35 corridor and then obviously out in toward the hill country. The ground, it, despite the fact we have more humidity out there and you can feel it when you walk outside, the obviously the brush in the ground is just tinder dry. And then on top of that, we have a wind advisory goes into effect at one o'clock up until four o'clock tomorrow morning for the eastern half of our viewing area. And then later on tonight, the other advisory posted is the uh, severe threat. There's a chance for a couple of isolated strong to severe storms primarily tomorrow morning about this time in the overnight hours and high winds going to be the biggest threat some uh, hail as well and that's in the northern half of our viewing area it does include the uh, northern fringes of bear county as far as uh, the allergens it looks like we're finally into the oak season now that's on the high side mold moderate little bits of hackberry and mulberry temperatures the rest of the morning Pretty much going to stay steady, maybe fluctuate a couple of degrees here and there. Wind is going to be out of the southeast, 15, 25 miles per hour, and we'll see some sunshine, a little more sunshine off to the west, more clouds off to the east, 73 at noon, and then we are going to top off later on today. Normal high is 77. We're going to be up to 85 later on today. That front comes through, and again, that's going to 
give us a rain chance early, early tomorrow morning. Clear things out. Good looking day, but again, more high fire danger. We're going to talk about the first day of Fiesta and first weekend of April coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, been pretty quiet. Still the case? Uh, you know, it's been quiet, Mike. We have had that overnight construction that wrapped earlier. Now that we're entering the 6 a.m. hour, it looks like stalls uh, are, are the issue right now. Just one here, though, off 37 at Loop 410. This is a shot from Trans Guide, but we have it pinpointed right here at Loop 410 at WW White. That's where Texada has this listed. So this could be another stall that we're looking at. So there could be actually two out there this morning. Make sure that you are checking those vehicles before you get out on the roadways and make sure you give those first responders plenty of room. It's still dark out there and we still have this road work though has uh, that's still continuing some bridge work that started overnight should be wrapping around six this morning. Drivers keep in mind this is off I 10 East. If you are coming in from Seguin right there in those westbound lanes though is where we are seeing that slowdown again that should be wrapping up around six this morning. Hopefully we'll see that red start to dis uh, disperse as the morning does go on, but no other problems elsewhere. We are seeing a lot of green on the screen, which is a great way to start that 6 a.m. hour. And if you are traveling into San Antonio, 28 minutes, 37 northbound at Pleasanton from Pleasanton to downtown San Antonio 90. Right now we're looking at 19 minutes on Highway 90 coming in from Castroville and 16, 16 minutes. That is 35 northbound coming in from Lytle. But again, make sure you check those vehicles. We'll watch this closely and give you those updates. That's coming up in the next few minutes, guys. Thank you, Stephen. The firefighting is over and now the fire investigation has begun at a home in Windcrest. It flared up not once but twice overnight in the 200 block of drift wind. Katrina Weber is there with a live update on this story and Katrina, it looks like that home had some major damage. How many people have been displaced? Now earlier, our firefighters told us that there were two men who lived here, but from this angle, it looks like they won't be able to go back here anytime soon. It looks like quite a bit of damage here. Now, firefighters are in the mop up stages. They're starting to wrap up their hoses, but uh, they were quite busy earlier this morning on two different occasions. Let me give you a look at the video. Now, they originally got the call here about 1245. They found fire in this home in the 200 block of drift wind. Uh, they were able to knock it down, and they said at that time that the damage was contained to one room of this house. Well, a few hours later, they got called back, and it no longer seems that's the case. There's damage from one end of the house all the way through the garage. Uh, and so firefighters now are trying to uh, just make sure that everything's out there. Again, putting away their equipment, and we have seen arson investigators from Bear County walking around the property uh, trying to, we assume, figure out how this fire started. And uh, that's not necessarily an indication, though, that this is anything suspicious, but they were called in to take a look around. Uh, we're still waiting to talk to any of the supervisors with the fire department to get an update on this latest fire. Uh, we are being held back by uh, Windcrest Police. They actually put up this crime scene tape about a half hour ago to make sure that we stayed on this side of the street and don't have access to anyone there. So uh, we're waiting for them to come over to us to give us an update. Reporting live in Windcrest, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. And we have more late breaking news. Another fire this time on the east side of town. Sarah Costa is there now at Hackberry and Omaha. Sarah, what can you tell us? Uh, it's a complete loss. We, uh, we have a collapsed building behind us with flames. So I'm gonna step out of the shot so you can see it. You see that flame has, it's just been burning pretty strong all morning. My photographer, Timmy, was thinking maybe it could possibly be a gas line. We don't know why that flame has been just so strong, but we have a home that is completely collapsed here on Omaha and South Hackberry on the city's east side. We are, you can see the Alamo Dome just right behind us here. Uh, you, we, I don't know if this was a home under construction, if there was family inside or not. We are still waiting to talk to firefighters. They are obviously still very busy at this time fighting the flames of this fire. Uh, you can see that we have a tree that has caught on fire there on the top. It's still burning. Uh, we have a downed power line as well on the top of that power pole smoking. Uh, they have been fighting the fire defensively. They even have a, a ladder truck out here. Uh, when my photographer Timmy said he arrived, they were fighting it from the top of that ladder and that fire truck. Again, we don't know if anyone was injured, anyone in the home, if this is abandoned home. We actually had a story on the night beat last night about a string of fires on the east side uh, hitting construction sites. Now, we don't know if this was a construction site again, abandoned home, or if there was a family inside. We're going to hopefully have that information for you coming up in our next half hour once we talk to firefighters.
Live from the east side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man recovering after an overnight shooting on the southeast side of town. This happened around 10 last night on West Gerald Avenue, not far from West South Cross Boulevard. That's where police say a man in his 30s was sitting in his house when someone outside started shooting at him, hitting him in the lower back. He was taken to the hospital and is doing OK. At this time, officers don't know if the suspect was in a vehicle or on foot. Some other stories we're following this morning. Bernie police confirm a four year old child died in a rollover crash. Investigators say that child may not have been properly restrained along with two other children that were also thrown from that vehicle. It happened on I-10 around 2 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Police say a woman was driving a black SUV and lost control before overcorrecting and causing the SUV to roll over. And cleanup is underway in Skyco County, Pennsylvania, following this deadly pileup. Are you seeing this video? Police there say snowy conditions led to an ongoing massive crash on Interstate 81. At least 50 vehicles are involved, many of them unable to stop on the roadway. Right now, we know at least three people were killed. At least 24 were hurt. The White House setting out its new budget goals. President Biden proposing $5.8 trillion in spending. It includes higher taxes on the wealthiest Americans and more money going to police, education, public health and housing. Wall Street heading into today's session after shrugging off a slump and posting gains at the closing bell. The Dow finished up 0.3 percent, the S&P rising 0.7 percent and the Nasdaq closing 1.3 percent higher. Markets around the world also posting gains overnight on hopes for the next round of peace talks between Russia and Ukraine. HP making a $1.7 billion bet on working from home. It's buying Polly, a maker of audio and video conferencing products like headsets and cameras. HP says only about 10% of offices are equipped with video conferencing setups. All right, almost that time for Fiesta and the medal giveaways have begun. That's right. So keep watching our newscast and we're going to announce a little later on GMSA where you can get your KSAT medal. Where can we get ours? I don't know. We'll have find to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask around for you, Mark. I'll get back it's to you. It's a different department. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, stay tuned, folks. Those medal giveaways do continue. 610 right now, 67 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, TikTok may be rolling out a new feature that will help you find lost videos. We're going to have the details. And have we seen the end of cat allergies as we know them? Just ahead, we'll tell you why some scientists are saying that may be a thing of the past. And taking a look outside with live cam, another warm morning and fire danger once again. We'll be checking in with Mike later on. In your morning tech bites, could cat allergies become a thing of the past? Well, scientists say they have used new gene editing technology to create hypoallergenic felines. The study found gene editing may be able to eliminate a protein that's a major source of suffering for those with cat allergies. Apple reportedly cutting production. A new report says Apple will make 20% fewer iPhone SEs in the next three months. And the company will reportedly make 10 million fewer AirPods this year. The cuts result of less demand than expected. TikTok is testing a new feature to make it easier to find lost videos. The platform is simplifying how users can access their watch history. Now videos that vanish into the massive stream of content when you refresh your For You page can be quickly located and saved. 6.15 on a Tuesday morning. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, Tuesday traffic has been pretty terrific. We did have some uh, construction spots that have actually wrapped up or that work had been going on for a few hours. But right now, things are looking pretty smooth there off 1604 at Kitty Hawk. We're also seeing traffic pretty much non-existent there at some other spots. US 90 at 410. However, as we are seeing the morning get going, we want to look ahead to the next part of the day, which is going to be a little bit around 9 this morning. Some drilling work will actually be taking place uh, that started on Monday. We'll wrap up on Friday. That's April 1st. Drivers, keep in mind, this is over off 35 and it starts at 9 in the morning and will wrap at 4 in the afternoon. So you can expect to see a single lane closure there on the northbound frontage road from Chelsea Place to Legacy Oaks Parkway. So again, keep that in mind if you are traveling northbound along 35. Let's take that drive down here because stalls have been the issue this morning. 410 WW White. We're seeing a stall that was reported here right there in the northbound lanes and we see it further down as we drive over here at 30 
37 at loop 410. We haven't pinpointed that direction just yet, but as I mentioned, check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. Wide look, the map doesn't really show that we're seeing a whole lot of activity out there, but I think for anybody that's getting their day started, they're not going to complain about that. Guys, not at all. No jacket needed today at the bus stop by Coaster H. Yeah. Just read my mind. However, later on this week, you'll probably need one, especially Thursday and <clears throat> Friday mornings. More on that in just a moment. First of all, as far as the bus, my little bus going to show up? Nope. I guess I missed the bus this morning. So, all right, take a look at this. If you are walking around the uh, the Mountain Laurel and a lot of folks always say, my wife included, smells like grape Kool-Aid. Love the smell of Mountain Laurel. Oh, it's beautiful out there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, lots of clouds, and we're going to keep plenty of clouds around throughout the day. And the cloud cover is also, along with uh, some much higher humidity, helping to keep temperatures up. So we are, well, the average low is 55. We're anywhere 10 to 15 degrees above that right now. And we may fluctuate a couple of degrees in the next few hours. Um, up or down one or two notches here or there. And like I said, plenty of clouds. Then we are going to make it up into the low to mid 70s already by late morning. 73 at noon. We'll start to see more sunshine, especially off to the west, more sunshine. But again, a lot of clouds still hanging around here today. And we're going to be topping off in the mid 80s later on this afternoon. But again, the bottom numbers there wind about uh, 15, 20 miles per hour and then gusting on top of that. That's what's prompting the red flag warnings around the area. Those very high wind gusts, of course, tinder dry conditions, and that's sort of negating the fact that we do have higher humidity out there, which does help out, but still not enough to uh, prevent those red flag warnings from being issued. And then also wind advisories from one this afternoon up until four o'clock tomorrow morning for the eastern half of our viewing area. Lots of uh, clouds right now. Like I said, we're going to keep plenty of clouds around throughout the day. And later on tonight, then we're going to watch a front work its way on in here. That's going to touch off a few showers. Not going to be a, a soaking drought busting sort of a rain, but at least any we get some rain. So anything is going to be welcome out there. And this line, a fairly narrow line of showers, a couple of thunder storms will work its way across the area about the time we go on tomorrow morning is when it's going to be moving through town and then by roughly mid uh, mid morning commute that's going to be getting on out of here so by the roughly the end of newscast tomorrow most of the rain should be out of san antonio working its way off to the east as it comes through it may touch off one or two strong to potentially severe storms high winds going to be the biggest threat some small hail we're sort of on the the fringe of this here in northern bear county it's up into the hill country but the majority of anything strong to potentially severe is going to be well up there to the uh, the north of us. So here's the next low, which is working its way across the area. It stays too far to the north to really give us a good shot at rain. So we're sort of on the tail end of it, but then in behind it pulls in some beautiful weather around here. But the problem being is that we are going to have dry conditions and still windy conditions tomorrow. So Weather Service has indicated that we'll be issuing another red flag warning for tomorrow on top of today's red flag warning. 73 degrees today at noon, windy conditions and then a high temperature up to 85. Again, a lot of clouds and a little more sunshine off to the west where you don't need any more sunshine. 85 today. Tomorrow we start off mild. Front comes through, pulls in much, much drier air, which of course does not help out the fire situation tomorrow. We'll have those morning showers, a couple of thunderstorms around and then down to 48 Thursday morning. So kind of a cool start, huge warm up throughout the day. Same thing on Friday, beautiful start for Fiesta Fiesta on Thursday evening. And then more humidity comes in here by the weekend. Here we go. You ready? Yes, I'm Me very too. excited about that. Me too. Long time coming. Thank you, Mike. 620, about 67 degrees. And our San Antonio's first squeak by with a win on the road last night. And the silver and black are still very much still alive to make the playoffs. We're going to explain right after the break. Introducing your 2022 Fiesta Royalty, powered by Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hello, I'm Elena Mikulski, Miss San Antonio. Viva Fiesta! Meet the current reigning Miss San Antonio, who's a senior at Liberty University. I'm studying psychology and I'm going to get my PhD in psychometrics. I started competing in the Miss America organization because I fell in love with Fiesta. Elena is honored to be part of the Miss America organization. I am surrounded by some of the most educated, strong young women in all of Texas. And as Miss San Antonio,
Antonio, she's using that platform for mental health awareness. I started my platform, Talk Through the Taboo, which is breaking down the stigma surrounding mental illness. So I want to be an example for people saying that, you know, it's completely normal to have mental illness, to deal with mental health struggles, and that there are people out there and resources available to people. The Fiesta events Elena looks forward to most? I'm really excited to go to the parades and just see all of San Antonio, see all of the citizens and uh, see all the floats. I love them. Why hide your skin? If Dupixent has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin, not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin, not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixent, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. Welcome back, 625, our San Antonio Spurs were looking to sweep their four-game road trip last night against the Rockets in Houston. Spurs started strong and finished the first half with a 67 to 55 lead. In the end, it would be close. Houston had a chance to force overtime, but Kenyon Martin Jr.'s game tying three rims out at the buzzer. So Spurs survived. They beat the Rockets 123 to 120. Best part, DeJounte Murray scored a career high 33 points while Kelton Johnson had 21. With the win, the team inches closer to that final play-in spot in the West for the playoffs. Up next, Spurs come home to post host the Memphis Grizzlies. Tip-off set for tomorrow night, 7.30 at the AT&T Center. And we are ready for Fiesta. Fiesta Fiesta starting Thursday, but we're giving out medals now. So later in this newscast, we will announce where and when you can pick up our 2022 Fiesta medal. Keep it here on KSAT. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you hate the cold, you are loving this morning. We have some clouds around. It is very, very mild out there as we start off your Tuesday, March 29th. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. And yeah, we can give our jackets and sweaters a little break. Yeah. Although now. we're going to take one more dip in temperatures. Mike Osterhage joins us now to talk about a slight chance at a shower or storm. We'll take what we can get at this point, Mike. Yes, that's going to be right around this time tomorrow morning. We've got mm -hmm. a front moving through in the overnight hours. So, yeah, anything is, is welcome. It's not going to be a big uh, drought breaker, unfortunately. Ahead of that and even behind that front, we do have high fire danger. This morning, lots of clouds, and we keep plenty of clouds around. Temperatures are, yeah, you don't need a jacket. We're in the mid upper 60s around here and then later on today in the mid 80s almost uh, kind of mid May sort of temperatures because on both ends of the scale we're about 10 to 15 degrees above normal plenty of humidity which is helpful but not enough to counteract the winds and the very dry tinder out there and we have a lot of uh, well Pretty good wind right now, 10, 15 mile per hour breezes. And then we've got some gusts to 22 at Bernie stage, 28 already at Lost Maples, 15 at Balverde, and it's gonna be blustery all day long with winds gusting 25 to 30 miles per hour. And that's prompting the red flag warnings to be issued. Again, going to affect 10 o'clock up until eight o'clock this evening. And on top of that, or along with that, at one o'clock this afternoon, a wind advisory goes into effect for the eastern half of our area up until four tomorrow morning. And then, in addition to that, we have a small chance, very small chance for some uh, thunderstorms in the overnight and wee hours tomorrow morning. Some of those, just one or two isolated ones in our area could become strong to severe with high winds and small hail being the biggest threats. But the biggest or the best chance for that is further up to the north. This is just on the northern fringes of Bear County into portions of the hill country. And again, that's going to be tomorrow morning as this front works its way on through here. Allergens, oak, looks like we're finally into the oak season. 
season. It's on the high side. Mold moderate, Hackberry and Mulberry low. Updated count's going to be coming out in about a half hour, 45 minutes. So warm and windy this morning and then mostly cloudy, a little more sunshine off to the west. Windy and mid 80s for a high temperature. Tomorrow we'll have showers and a couple of thunderstorms in the morning. That clears on out fairly quickly. Good looking day. However, much, much drier air, still windy, so still very high fire danger tomorrow. And the rest of the week we're going to have lots of sunshine. It'll be actually on the cool side starting off. Thursday, Friday mornings, and then we warm up and humidity is going to be okay to start off and we'll see some more humidity coming back on in here by the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, you haven't had a whole heck of a lot to talk about this yeah, morning. I knew you were going to say that, but <laughs> that's some good news. <laughs> that's good news, right? Anytime we don't have a lot to talk about, that means the roads are pretty much easy for you, especially if they head out the door in the next few moments. However, we do have stalls and stalls aren't a big issue, but when we see more people get out on the roadways, it can definitely definitely impact traffic and you definitely also want to make sure you're giving first responders plenty of room. We do have that one there off 37 at 410, but we also have this stall off loop 410 northbound at WW White. You can see a slight buildup in that direction, but that buildup is pretty normal each morning where we see that uh, traffic going in those uh, westbound lane or northbound lanes. Pardon me of 410. So just watch out for those flashing lights and that stranded motorist out there. But we see that trend continue as we take that drive over here to 410 northbound at Gulebna Road. This stall not causing seen any issues for drivers, but as I mentioned, that has been the trending problem throughout the entire morning. We did have some construction that has uh, finally wrapped overnight, but there will be a little bit more construction happening uh, later this morning. I should say uh, in a few different spots, but if you are traveling into San Antonio, great news is no delays just yet, but we are seeing a 29 minute drive time to downtown San Antonio coming in from Bolverde and those southbound lanes of 281. Other than that, yes, the morning has been quiet, but we're going to continue to watch these roads closely and we will have those construction spots coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. We want to take you back to late breaking news this morning. A massive fire on San Antonio's east side. Sarah Costa is on the scene at Hackberry in Omaha and Sarah, have there been any updates? Uh, we did speak with the San Antonio Fire Department and they did tell us they at this time do not know if anyone was home, but I'm going to take you because uh, give you a look at this fire. So that big flame that you see uh, is just kind of like Fully roaring. That is a gas line, and uh, the fire department did tell us that the CPS Energy is going to have to dig into the street to cut it off. So that flame is going to be going for a while. This is a home that has been completely collapsed. Uh, firefighters said when they got here, they didn't know if anyone was home or not, or if this was a building under a home under construction or not, because it was completely taken over by flames when they got here. They put out most of it except for that line that is still going. Uh, we still see a little bit of flame in the tree there and we had a down power line, but CPS Energy has arrived and they have cut off power at this time. Now the fire did spread to the home next door. No one was home. Uh, firefighters did tell us that it looks like the house next door had a lot of construction equipment in it, so they may be doing some renovations there. Again, still have not confirmed if anyone was hurt in this fire or if anyone was home. Uh, firefighters say that arson is on the way. Um, again, there have been a string of fires at construction sites at homes on the east side, and firefighters said they are not ruling out the possibility of it being an arsonist at this time. Live from the east side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. All right, thank you, Sarah. Two people have been burned out of their home in Windcrest, and firefighters were called there twice overnight after the original fire flared up again. Katrina Weber is live where it happened in the 200 block of Drift Wind, and we understand you had a chance to talk to firefighters, and there was one injury associated with this fire, Katrina. Well, that's right. Uh, he told me it was a firefighter who hurt his ankle. He stepped off the sidewalk incorrectly and twisted his ankle. So they sent him to the hospital by ambulance to get uh, his sprained ankle checked out. But uh, the home itself, a lot of damage. No one injured in the fire directly. This home in the 200 block of Driftwind originally went up in flames before 1230 this morning. It was quite a response here. Uh, we can give you a look at the video so you can see what happened. The firefighters came out here the first time. They knocked down the fire. They said it was contained to just a couple of rooms in the house at the time. Arson investigators came in right after they finished, took a look around, and as they were leaving, they noticed that it looked like the fire was sparking up again. So they called the fire crews back here. 
they got here. But what happened is the wind carried that fire and spread it throughout the house. So now there is damage throughout the entire house. Now, originally when the fire broke out earlier this morning, uh, there were two people in the home. They managed to get out safely. They were not here the second time around. Firefighters were here, but there was little that they could do to save this house. They say that because it was already opened up from that first fire, the wind was just able to whip those flames and then carry them through the entire house and even into the garage. Reporting live in Windcrest, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Close call for a bicycle rider in Northern California. Take a look at this video from San Jose. Wow, you can see the bicyclist narrowly escape with his life after two cars collide right next to him. Believe it or not, no one was seriously hurt in this collision. And the Pentagon is planning to accelerate production of missiles as it continues to send weapons to Ukraine. These new weapons will go toward refilling the Defense Department's depleted stock. Officials say it is ramping up production of Stinger anti-air missiles and Javelin anti-tank missiles. According to a recent military assistance wish list, Ukraine has requested the U.S. deliver 1,000 of these weapons daily. The U.S. and other NATO members have already sent tens of thousands of missiles to help Ukraine fight off Russia's invasion. 637, 67 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, some tips for planning home renovations and how you can save some money along the way. And coming up after the break, we'll tell you where and when you can get your hands on a 2022 KSAT Fiesta medal today. And welcome back at 641. We want to get back to that late breaking news. A big fire on the city's east side. Sarah Coast is over there at Hackberry in Omaha. Sarah, what's the latest? Uh, a second flame just kind of erupted behind us, and that's why you see firefighters uh, actively, you know, spraying it right now. We, it, the flame is gone, but you see that smoke, like that smoke plume still happening. Now, this is a home on Omaha and Hackberry, completely collapsed. Uh, firefighters don't know if anyone was home or if anyone was injured. When they arrived, the flames had, had taken over the home. Uh, and that flame that you're seeing happening right now, that is a gas line. And CPS Energy, you can see their truck is here. They are on scene. They have already cut the power off, but that gas line, uh, firefighters are telling us they're going to have to dig under the street to cut that fire, uh, to cut that gas line off. So that flame is gonna be going on for a while. So fire crews are just gonna have to keep an eye on that flame. The home, it did spread to the home next door and they're also keeping an eye on that home to make sure nothing continues to spread. They don't know if this is a construction site or not. Just stay with us on air and online as we get those updates. Live from the east side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News, Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much, Sarah. Homeowners nationwide are trending towards specific home projects like kitchen remodels, living room upgrades, or outdoor projects. In this morning's Ask Angie report, we have some tips to tackle these popular home renovation projects and save some money along the way. According to a recent survey we did at Angie, kitchen remodels are one of the top projects in 2022. We are spending a lot more time at home and a lot more time in the kitchen and want to make that space feel open, relaxed, modern, and function really well. My top advice for anyone looking to renovate their kitchen is to plan ahead and think outside the box. Make a list of things you want to change and prioritize them about how much they'll impact your daily life. You can make impactful changes to the space within any budget. You just might have to be a little bit more creative. If you're looking to make changes to your kitchen on a smaller budget, try playing with different paint colors. Both light, natural colors, and bold, playful colors are going to be on the rise in 2022. This year, we'll also see a rise of natural materials in living rooms, things like cork, glass, wood, and metal. These materials are gaining popularity because they're sustainable and will last longer in your home. If you have more time in your hands, consider taking on your own outdoor project. Spend some time improving your patio or deck or building one if that's on your to-do list. Other ways to spruce up the space include adding ambient lighting, a TV, a fire pit, and a few outdoor games to make it the perfect space for your family and guests to spend time. Fiesta is almost here, San Antonio. We at KSAT want to help you get in the spirit of the season by sharing our very own KSAT Fiesta medal. We're giving some away, and here's where you can get yours today. That's right. Starting at 8 a.m., you can get a KSAT Fiesta medal at the HEB at 
18, excuse me, 18,140 block of San Pedro. That's near 281 and Loop 1604. That's right. Again, it's 18140 San Pedro, 281, 1604 area. First come, first serve. Begins at 8 o'clock. The meadows will be given away while supplies last. That's the fine print there. Yes. And you have time because it's 644 right now and the traffic looks good out there so far. <laughs> that's true, but there is going to be some road work that's uh, going to be taking place later today. Right now, things are looking a OK on the roadway 37 at Fair Avenue. We do have a few stalls out there, but again, keep in mind some road work that will begin at 9 this morning. We're going to show you three different spots here. First one is uh, here up toward 35. We do have some drilling work that started on Monday. We'll start at 9 in the morning and wrap at 4 in the afternoon. This also project will end on April 1st. Dr Drivers, keep in mind a single lane closure on the northbound frontage road from Chelsea Place to Legacy Oak. So that's where you can expect that work. As we continue that drive over here, looks like we may have just had a crash pop up. We'll find out what's happening there in just a moment. But some utility work later this morning, 9 in the morning at 4 in the afternoon. Again, that will wrap at April 1st. This is going to be a single southbound lane closure at State Highway 151. And it's road construction here off of 410 that will begin at 9 in the morning, wrap at 5 in the afternoon. Drivers can expect a full closure of the southbound bypass ramp to West Military Drive. We're going to find out what's happening there along 35, so uh, we'll go ahead and find out what's happening there, but let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Thank you very much, sir, and nice picture of the uh, blue bonnets. Beautiful there on 71 heading up toward Austin. Make sure if you are doing this on the highways, you do it safely. Don't just stop on the, the side of the road there on a busy highway. Lots of clouds out uh, this morning. We have very warm temperatures. We're in the uh, 60s right now. We're about 10 to 15 degrees above normal. We're going to stay low or mid and upper 60s this morning. Plenty of clouds. The wind is going to start to pick up by about mid morning and in toward noon. We'll see some sunshine. We get up into the low 70s by late morning, 73 at noon, and then continue up and add another 10, almost 15 degrees to that stays windy all afternoon and more sunshine off to the west, more clouds to the east, 85 for high temperature today. And again, it is going to stay windy all day long and pretty much all night long. So we have red flag warning that goes into effect 10 o'clock till 8 o'clock, gusts to 25 to 30 miles per hour. Any fires, of course, as you've been seeing in the news the past few days, can spread extremely rapidly. And this is for the about uh, western two-thirds of our viewing area. And then overnight, like I said, it's going to stay windy. So we have wind advisories from early afternoon up until 4 o'clock tomorrow morning for the eastern half of the area. Despite the fact that we have the red flag warning, despite the fact that we have all of this humidity around here, the wind and this very dry condition. So we keep the humidity around throughout the rest of today. Then tonight, here comes a front that's moving on through here. Much and Normally, this is a good thing. Get rid of the humidity if you if you like drier air and we get very, very dry air coming on in here. But with this dry air and still windy conditions, this is going to increase or keep the fire danger very high again tomorrow. So the weather service has indicated it is going to issue a red flag warning for tomorrow. Tonight, as that front moves through, it will touch off a few showers. Won't be a drought breaker, won't be that heavy widespread rain we need, but at least we get something as far as rain. A few showers and thunderstorms that are going to be moving through in the morning hours tomorrow. And by about mid-morning commute, most of that rain is going to be out of here. So by about the end of the newscast tomorrow morning, most of it should be out of the area. We'll still have some wet roads left over, of course. Some of those uh, storms could be on the strong, potentially severe side. Just one or two of them. They'll be isolated in northern Bear County and in and around portions of the hill country tomorrow morning early. High winds going to be the biggest threat. Some hail. The majority of anything strong to potentially severe is going to be further up to the north. Forecast today, again, 73 at noon. We will keep a lot of clouds around today. Limited sunshine thrown in. Windy conditions, and it stays windy all day long. Again, gusts about 25 to 30 miles per hour. 85 high temperature today. Then tomorrow, we have rain in the wee hours, the early morning hours, up uh, through about news noon time, news time tomorrow morning. Then we start to clear out. Windy again, very dry, good looking day, but very high fire danger. Cooler Thursday morning, Friday morning, get up into the mid 80s. We stay on the warm side all the way through the weekend. Start of Fiesta looks very nice. More humidity coming in here this weekend. Hopefully another couple of showers by uh, early on Monday. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. About 10 till 7, 67 degrees. And now that the weather is warming up, it's a great time to get outside. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you about some of the best trails in our area that you can explore. And outside with live cam as we all wake up on an early Tuesday morning. 
Come on, sunshine. Just <laughs> yeah, yawning. Slow to uh, rise and shine for sure. We'll be right back. Introducing your 2022 Fiesta Royalty, powered by Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, I'm Daylin Mann, and I'm your 2022 Queen of Soul. Viva Fiesta! Meet this year's Queen of Soul. I grew up here in San Antonio, Texas, went to school here. I'm currently going to Our Lady of the Lake University. I'm studying mass communications and specializing in multimedia journalism. Um, I think media is a way to really reach people, and that's my goal in life. And as the Queen of Soul, she hopes to make an impact in the community. When I wear this sash, I am representing something bigger than myself. I'm representing the community, my, my African-American community. And as such, I want people to say, look, that's the Queen of Soul. She got it going on. She's a great leader. I want my daughter to be just like her. When it comes to celebrating Fiesta, Dalen enjoys the fact that it's a party with a purpose. Everybody loves to party. Everybody loves to, you know, get together and, you know, watch the parades or eat good food. Everybody loves to do that. And then when you mesh party with, you know, raising money for charitable organizations, it's the greatest way to do it, in my opinion. The one Fiesta event she looks forward to. My favorite all-time Fiesta event is the parade. It will forever be the parade. When I was a child, my grandmother would take me to the parades and we'd sit out there and we'd get the medals and beads and, you know, we just have a lovely time. And I remember that was like one of the most fulfilling moments of my life. A home on the east side has collapsed after taking over by flames early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. We are live on South Hackberry in Omaha. I'm going to get out of the way so you can see that flame behind me. Firefighters said when they arrived around 530 this morning, the home was completely on fire. They don't know if anyone was hurt or inside. That fire did spread next door. No one was in the home next door. Now that flame you are seeing right now is being fueled by a gas line. CPS Energy can't cut off that gas line until they are able to dig under the street. So crews will be out here for a while, making sure that flame does not spread. It, it is starting to ignite um, a couple of times throughout the morning. You see the fire crews starting to, they're keeping an eye on it and making sure it doesn't spread. But we'll give you updates as this story develops throughout the morning. Live from the east side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. In case you missed it earlier, here's the location of today's KSAT Fiesta Medal giveaway. Starting at 8 a.m., you can get a KSAT Medal at the HEB at 18140 San Pedro. That's in the Northwood Shopping Center, 281 and 1604 on the far north side. First come, first serve, serve. they'll be given away while our supplies last. And that's right. It's 655, so you have time to travel over there. Lots of time. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Things aren't looking bad here on Transguide Mark Stephanie. However, there is an issue off of 35. Let's go ahead and just take you right to it, because here in the southbound lanes, you're going to see a crash that's impacting traffic right now, right near Live Oak. So drivers coming into San Antonio, you can expect to see a slowdown. And elsewhere, we're seeing those slowdowns along 1604 and Highway 90. Some stalled vehicles out there as well. We'll look at the morning commute as the morning does roll on, Mike. Lots of clouds hanging around here, and it is very warm. You can probably get away without uh, wearing a jacket this morning. 68 degrees and even mid-60s in portions of the hill country, and we've got some pretty good winds out there, gusting already about 28 miles per hour. Red flag warnings in effect today, and we are going to keep a high fire danger around and maybe a couple of showers and thunderstorms early tomorrow morning. Make it a great day, folks. All right. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here at 9.